and Nikolai Kosmatov. The presentation will be given by Adir Judy. The title, Formal Verification of Java Car Virtual Machine with Pharmacy. Adir, Thank please. you. Thank you, Durel. I hope the sound is uh, good. Yeah, uh, so, okay. Thank you. So my name is Adel Judy. I will present uh, um, our work with uh, joint work with Martin Anna and Nikolai Kosmatov on the formal verification of Java Card Virtual Machine with Framacy. The I will start with by introducing the, the context of our work. So this uh, work uh, is um, conducted by uh, Thales for uh, the EL6 certification of a Java card uh, platform for a smart card product for EL6 certification. There are three fields of expertise uh, involved in this uh, project. The uh, Java card uh, standard specification, the common criteria uh, certification process, and uh, deductive verification of uh, C programs. In this talk, I will mainly focus on uh, this, um, our approach to apply deductive verification on our C implementation of a Java card virtual machine with the Framacy. So the Java card um, uh, st standard specification specifies the expected behavior of uh, the Java card virtual machine that is to execute and interpret Java card applications bytecode. So each bytecode or each opcode in this bytecode is uh, read iteratively in the main dispatch loop uh, from the code uh, memory. And uh, each opcode may have a side effect on the Java stack or the, uh, or the heap memory. Uh, there are three uh, memory, uh, heap memory uh, kinds that are specified in the specification, either persistent, transient, reset, or deselect according to the uh, life cycle of uh, the Java card applications. A unique context is assigned to each uh, Java card binary and each object manipulated object during the execution is owned by a unique context that is encoded in the header of the object. The Java card virtual machine um, ensures um, secure sharing of data between the different applets during execution, thanks to this uh, firewall uh, mechanism. Uh, that mainly ensures that uh, the accesses between uh, contexts are denied except well-defined situations uh, that will not break this uh, isolation property of data uh, between contexts. Uh, the main security aspect of uh, uh, Java card virtual machines is this isolation property, property between contexts ensured by the firewall as stated by the uh, open configuration protection for profile that instantiates the um, common criteria requirements for Java card systems. And um, these uh, common criteria uh, require uh, or mandate the usage of formal methods for the verification of such security properties for the highest assurance levels, uh, starting from EL6 uh, and uh, EL7. So for the sake of clarity, let's consider these three uh, simple uh, security properties in the remainder of this uh, talk. Uh, the first property integrity header states that the object headers should not be modified at all during the VM execution. Integrity data states that the uh, object body or data cannot be modified unless by the context owning this, uh, these objects. And confidentiality data states analogously that the uh, data of the objects cannot be read unless by the owner context of these objects. So, as I said, our approach is based on uh, the Framacy platform and uh, especially the WP plugin for deductive verification. The basic usage of this um, plugin requires uh, three main steps. The first one is to annotate the program with um, ACSL function contracts and uh, loop contracts. Then to uh, let the tool uh, compute the proof goals, the elementary proof goals based on these annotations and the whole logic uh, and the weakest precondition calculus. 
Then the final step is to discharge the generated proof obligations or proof goals with uh, either the internal simplification engine of uh, WP, which is named QED, or an external prover like uh, Altergo. Uh, in practice, um, advanced features are required like ghost code, predicates, lemmas, or proof scripts. As uh, to, to achieve the proof on realistic uh, programs, as in our case. Uh, two other plugins are also used in our project, uh, namely RT and uh, MetaXL. Uh, Meta so these plugins have the advantage of automatically generating ACSL uh, annotations and insert them at the appropriate program points. Uh, these uh, Appropriate program points are uh, for RTE, for instance, the instructions that may trigger undefined behaviors. And for MetaXL, these program points are um, specified by the user through uh, meta properties, global meta properties. For instance, this meta property named uh, M targets all the instructions in the set of functions uh, named F and um, uh, inserts a specific assertion before instructions that perform reading operations into the memory and states that the property, this property of uh, that the read memory locations are separated from uh, the, error, the elements of the array data that are considered as sensitive data and uh, that cannot be disclosed. So with these plugins of Framacy, we are able to uh, specify our security properties directly on the C implementation of uh, the Java Card virtual machine, as uh, depicted in this uh, toy example, a call graph of a toy example. And uh, in order to better explain explain this uh, or illustrate this uh, example, let's focus first on this, the core of this uh, specification, which is the Java card virtual uh, machine memory model, and in particular, the heap memory model. So for this example, the heap memory model is split into uh, different segments, uh, separate segments. The object headers are uh, stored in a separate uh, array uh, called obj header. The persistent and transient object data are stored in two separate uh, uh, separate arrays named persi data and trans data. We use ACSL predicates in order to um, encode or specify the memory constraints. For example, the predicate valid heap model uh, specifies the, that the number of allocated object in the VM is within the uh, load bounds and that the headers uh, are uh, stored in the appropriate segment and that the headers of the objects do not overlap with each other. And the same for the data of the objects that are stored in the appropriate segments without overlapping. We also use ACSL predicates to uh, specify security properties. So for example, this predicate object headers intact specifies that the content of the uh, objects uh, headers uh, are the same at two program points, L1 and L2. And uh, that is uh, useful to state our uh, integrity header predicate or property security property. So we use these predicates in the contracts of uh, our implementation. For instance, here we have the function uh, BA store for an opcode that uh, writes a value uh, in a given array at a given offset. And uh, the contract of this uh, function states that the heap model constraints are maintained valid before executing the function and after executing the function. So we, uh, uh, we, we prove that this opcode maintains the memory constraints. We have the security property object headers intact maintained as a uh, post condition. That means that this opcode do not uh, modify the, the headers at the end. Okay, then we have uh, these 
uh, function contracts that are propagated um, upwards to the call-in functions. And here, uh, the dispatch loop, uh, these uh, properties are uh, proved as uh, maintained as uh, loop invariants. So fortunately, this um, uh, so some integrity and confidentiality properties are not um, uh, are not specifiable with WP alone, and but fortunately, the Meta Excel plugin provides means to specify such uh, such properties. For instance, here we have a Meta property named Meta per C objects uh, confident that uh, that targets all the instructions of uh, all functions in our uh, Java card implementation uh, that perform a uh, memory access, uh, read in memory access, and uh, states that uh, the, uh, the access memory locations are, are, are separated from the objects if the uh, object is not the own, if the, if the execution, current executing context is not the owner of these objects. So this meta property is considered as proved if all the assertions generated from it are proved in the, in the implementation. And um, we uh, uh, also considered uh, uh, using checks in, instead of uh, assertions check clauses instead of assertions. The advantage is that the check clauses do not overload the proof context and uh, make uh, this meta property based approach scale very well despite the great number of, uh, of generated annotations. So the scalability is um, a major concern in our case. And so we, uh, use a couple of techniques in order to uh, leverage the power of automation of the, the provers we use. Uh, for instance, we, uh, we use ghost code in order to uh, get back the provers to their comfort zone regarding the low level uh, manipulations and operations we can find in our code. We also use proof scripts and uh, carefully chosen lemmas in order to help the provers uh, to perform the, the, the proof. We may consider our lemmas are preferable in some cases because the scripts uh, may require some redundant um, manual uh, operations, but it depends on, on the uh, cases. Here is an example of low level uh, operations that we may face in the uh, implementation. I can go back to them if there are uh, questions on it uh, at the end. So uh, let's uh, see some measurements of uh, uh, the uh, specification effort and, uh, and uh, the proof results. So to give an idea about the specification effort, more than 7,000 of lines of uh, C code were uh, analyzed in, in this uh, project. Uh, this required more than 35,000 lines of um, user provided annotations, ACSL annotations. We managed to reduce this effort to 12,000 lines of ACS annotations thanks to the usage of uh, parameterized micros, but still this effort is uh, considerable. Uh, the Meta Excel plugin alone generated almost 400,000 of ACSL annotations, uh, lines of uh, ACSL annotations uh, from 36 uh, Meta properties only. The, um, in our paper, we provide a thorough analysis of the proof results. Uh, in this slide, I suggest just to focus on two uh, major points. So the first one is that we managed to make our uh, approach scale uh, on and with an increasing number of proof goals. So we see that to, while we uh, uh, increase the number of proof goals 10 times, the time to prove these goals is uh, barely uh, multiplied times four. So it's a quite, uh, quite interesting feature. And the second point is that 
we managed to get 99% of the uh, approved goals proved automatically, which is also uh, very interesting. At the end, so uh, you recall here uh, the main achievements of uh, our uh, use case. The main achievement remains this EL6 certificate uh, issued by the French uh, Certification Authority. And as a future work, we uh, managed to, uh, we, we plan to introduce this approach, proof approach in a sustainable continuous integration process for the development of our software uh, at Thales. Thank you for your attention. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you very much. Very nice presentation, very nice work. And we have time for one more presentation. Yeah. Uh, questions, sorry. Do you have questions? Sir? You can uh, raise a hand or to, to ask directly. Yeah. I have a question, okay. Uh, so uh, I see that focus was on uh, the security properties, but can you comment a bit the relationship between access specification and uh, Java card uh, virtual machine specification? What, how uh, it relates? Yes, it's a good question. So we, the Java card specification is, um, is a field of expertise for its own. But here for EL6, what the common criteria uh, mandate is to specify the uh, security properties. For uh, EL7, they require or mandate to uh, fully express the Java card specification and the side effects of each opcode. Uh, so it is more for EL7. For EL6, we um, the, the major part of the specification is in this memory model. That is, uh, we consider uh, uh, persistent objects, transient objects, the constraints that uh, make uh, uh, objects persistent or uh, erasable uh, when the card is reset or the selected applet is uh, deselected. So all these constraints are in the specification and we had to uh, consider them. The isolation properties of the firewall are also part of the specification that we were, uh, uh, it was necessary to express them in ACSL uh, uh, contracts and properties. Mm -hmm. A more technical question, how the ghost code is related to implementation code? Very good question. So it was one of the slides I, I uh, skipped this one. Uh, for low-level operations, so the ghost code is. Uh, can you still see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for this example, uh, we have low-level operation that uh, uh, that is used to retrieve the object type from the uh, object header, performing a logical conjunction between the a byte in the object header and uh, the constant eight. But here we use a uh, ghost variable named uh, g is trans in order to encode in a simpler way this information and maintain this uh, uh, equivalence in our predicates so th this way we we we, uh, we we prove that our ghost representation is uh, uh, tr a trustful companion of our real implementation. Mm -hmm. And the last question, very fast. Is it possible to check or certify the proofs? To check the proofs, yes. The, the to get the certificate. Ah. Uh, to, to check the proof automatically. I, I understood uh, yeah, differently. Yeah. Uh, the, the evaluation process requires uh, uh, an evaluation from uh, third party entity, uh, independent mm -hmm. entity. So we, we were, uh, we submitted our work for a full uh, evaluation and we succeeded to pass this, um, this step. It was mainly with uh, some systematic um, uh, approaches to check, um, uh, to, to check that uh, 
our uh, specification is well structured, but there is no automatic tool to, to check uh, okay. the, the specification it's, itself. Thank you very much. Okay. We have just a comment from Peter Miller for you. Great work, great talk. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank.